Hi, I'm Sylvia. And I'm Nina. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript looks into the effects of the new U.S. tax bill, heads to the track and field with Hamped Up, and covers the Russian Olympic doping scandal. On Tuesday, a federal judge temporarily blocked President Trump's decision to end the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, known as DACA. The judge granted a request by the state of California to prevent President Trump from ending the program while their lawsuits make their way through the courts. DACA protects around 800,000 people who are brought to the U.S. illegally as children or are with families who have overstayed their visas, including thousands of college-age students. Additionally this week, the Department of Homeland Security announced its decision to end the protected status of immigrants from El Salvador that has allowed nearly 200,000 people to reside in the U.S. without fear of deportation. On Thursday, the death toll from mudslides in Southern California hit 17. The mudslides were the result of torrential rainstorms and flash flooding on areas that have been stripped of vegetation due to wildfires in recent months. Authorities estimate that only 10 to 15 percent of residents heeded the mandatory evacuation warnings in Santa Barbara County. On December 28th, violent protests erupted in Iran, which continued into January and have left an estimated 21 dead. Over 3,700 people have been arrested. Rallies began in protest of Iran's stagnant economy and rising living costs, but evolved to become broader protests against the Iranian government. Protests spread beyond the capital to at least 18 cities, and authorities have conducted mass arrests as well as restricted the use of social media sites such as Instagram and Twitter, which were used to organize protests. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo, and this is Tell It Like It Is. This week, we are discussing the new federal tax bill, which will affect every single American with changes to the tax rates starting early this year, making it the largest tax reform in American history. On Friday, December 15, 2017, President Donald Trump signed into law a massive one trillion tax bill, capping off a year-long effort by the White House and Republicans in Congress to slash tax rates for both corporations and individuals. I sat down with Bill Schwer, a contributing editor for Political Magazine, to discuss this new tax bill and its potential effects. The new tax bill uh, passed by uh, on a party line vote, only Republicans voted for it in the House and Senate, handful of Republicans voted no in the House. Uh, the centerpiece of it is a tax cut for corporations. Their uh, tax rate was 35 percent, now it will be 21 percent. It's a very complicated uh, piece of legislation. It's going to affect different people differently. There are people who are uh, upper middle class who have uh, expensive houses, uh, they might lose some of their uh, tax deduction for their mortgages. There are tax cuts for uh, lower middle class people. Uh, so you will get some people in the lower end that do see a tax cut of some sort. Individual tax cuts expire in 2025, while the corporate tax cuts don't expire. So you could argue, well, this shows that this is not really good for the middle class and the lower middle class over the long haul. Uh, Democrats are more likely to say that. Republicans are, are saying, well, when we get to 2025, we'll extend those anyway, so don't worry about that. Higher education is also directly impacted, as this legislation will tax the largest pri private college endowments and could put new strains on state budgets to fund public universities. I believe they, sh they shelved the proposal to uh, tax student loans uh, more heavily. I do believe they included a tax on certain college endowments. Colleges that have, the, and so on, on the surface it looks like these colleges sitting in these big piles of money uh, and that could go for better purposes, so why not take a chunk out of that? But colleges use those endowments often for financial aid purposes, so it's easier to help poor children go to school. Uh, so there may be an impact on how expansive financial aid will be uh, depending on uh, how this gets implemented. According to the Internal Revenue Service, new guidance about tax withholdings will be issued in January, which means the amount of taxes that come out of your paycheck could change as early as February. I'm Flor Castillo, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Gabe Nicotera. Welcome to Hamped Up. 
Indoor track accumulates the most athletes out of any other winter sport, but not all of those athletes are runners. The field events in indoor track consist of shot put, long jump, and high jump. To get a better visual on the less known field events, I chatted with members of the shot put squad as well as new coach Nick Sharon for long jump. So I'm here with Mary Green and Casey Shaw Merrigan. And Mary, can you describe shot put a little bit as a sport? Shot put is a field event in indoor track where you throw a heavy ball as far as you can. And Casey, do you feel that the shot put squad is secluded more from the rest of the track team? Um, not really. We still run a lot every day and then we just come over and throw a little bit at the end. Okay, uh, Mary, do you think you could demonstrate for me a typical shot put throw? Yeah. Great, thanks so much for being on Hampton. No, no problem. problem. I'm here with Nick Sharon, and uh, you recently transferred over from East Long Meadow. So what made you make the change to Northampton? Uh, I actually live in Northampton, so it's a lot easier for me to get from work to practice and then back home. It makes a lot of sense to be here rather than driving all over creation just to get mm -hmm. to practice and everything. What about long jump appeals to you versus the other field sports in indoor track? Uh, I actually was a long jumper in high school and in college, so I actually spent years in high school long jumping right here for indoor track. So long jump is actually the first event that I really, really loved in track, so I always gravitate back to it. After learning about these field events, I decided to try them on my own to see how tough they really are. The boys' indoor track team is off to a rocky 1-3 start, losing 58-37 against Westside last week. The girls' team is 2-3, beating Westside 68-27 the same day. The boys' basketball team is 7-1, and the girls' basketball team is still undefeated with a 7-0 record. They face Agalom tonight at 7.30 at home. The swimming and diving team has their seventh meet against Agalom today at 4 o'clock. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Gabe Nicotera. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz, and this is your Olympic Update. The Winter Olympic Games are fast approaching for most countries, except Russia. Last month, the International Olympic Committee suspended the Russian Olympic Committee from participating in the Pyeongchang Games that start on February 9th and run to the 25th. This has come as a response to a long-term issue of Russian athletes using performance-enhancing drugs to achieve an athletic advantage over its competitors. I talked with Phil Drobnik, head coach of this year's United States Olympic curling team, to get his perspective on the matter as a member of USA Curling. Do I think the IOC's decision to ban Russia from the uh, Olympics was an appropriate one? The IOC, um, you know, is, is the governing body of the Olympics, and the Olympics um, are uh, a place for fair games, and uh, rules are set in place um, for 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 all athletes and, um, you know, athletes work their entire life for, you know, to, to get to the Olympics. It's important that everybody's competing on a, on a level, uh, a, play, a level playing ground. And, um, if the IOC uh, sees that a team is, um, is, is not uh, following the rules or, or not, uh, doing what they, what, uh, the rest of the teams are doing, they, they have to do what they feel, um, is appropriate uh, and sanctioned in an appropriate way. Last month, Samuel Schmid, former member of the Swiss Federal Council, led an investigation confirming that there was, quote, a system of manipulation in Russia of the anti-doping rules and of the anti-doping system, end quote. The report, using witness testimonies, confirms that there's also manipulation of Olympic anti-doping rules back during the Sochi Games. Schmid's assembly recommended, via the Schmid Report, the disciplinary actions be taken against the Russian Olympic Committee. For Russia, this comes as a huge disappointment. The nation has been under a lot of scrutiny in international politics the past couple years. And for a time where countries can put aside their differences in play, Russia, sadly, will not be participating. Northampton High School history teacher Ryan Parent has that. I don't think it hurts glo Russia's global image at all, because I don't think most people really pay attention to it. I think there are far greater issues like meddling in our election, dealing with uh, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, and U the Ukraine. Those are much bigger issues than the Olympics. Clean Russian athletes will still be able to compete in the Olympic Games, but under the title Olympic Athlete from Russia, not their flag. 
The screening report also helped lay out a system in which athletes will be granted permission to participate. Players that pass strict regulations will wear special IOC jerseys and the Olympic anthem will be played in place of the hymn of the Russian Federation. Russian officials have also been banned from going to the games. The ban is in effect until further notice but isn't expected to keep Russia as a nation from competing in future games. Until next time, I'm Mikey Diaz and I O C you later. Thanks for watching. We hope everyone had a wonderful social justice week. As a continuation of the week, we invite all of you to join us for Tenderness, a multilingual theater production, today at 7 p.m. in the Black Box. Tickets are free for NHS students. Hope to see you tonight for this fabulous show. And don't forget to go to nhstechnology.org to watch the online extras. Stop. Don't, 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 don't. Stop. Don't. Stop. Don't.